Hello, my name is AJ Makarapa and welcome to Sustainably Smart Talks. And today, we're going to talk about how to land a fully funded PhD in the United Kingdom. And today, I'm joined today by my guest, Saeem Rahan, who is a PhD student at Loughborough University. Or, Saeem, introduce yourself to the people. Yep, thank you so much, AJ, for inviting me to your podcast. It's really a great honor to be here with you. And yeah, my name is Saim Bihan and I'm a first year PhD student here. I started my PhD in January 2025 and uh, yeah, I just completed my master's back in India in 2024 and my graduation, that too from India in 2022. And yeah, so it has been a great since I'm here and thank you so much. So tell us about your field of study. What's your innovation, your field and what you're aiming to achieve uh, at Loughborough University? Yeah, my PhD is more inclined towards signal processing, where I'm dealing with some uh, like uh, 6G technology that we are trying to incorporate some OTFS. Uh, it's orthogonal time frequency space. It is this modulation technique. It's nothing but the uh, like it, it. It is generally to overcome the limitation that we are currently facing in 5G and 4G with OFDM. So this technology is really going to make make you to communicate in high speed train and very high mobility scenarios. Excellent. As we make the transition <laughs> as of 5G to 6G networks, and that's why I actually work in the intersection of that. My research is an MBA backscatter communication, uh, which works on low power networks, uh, powering Internet of Things and how we're going to have smart cities, smart grids, and having these devices operate with no batteries. So, um, but yep. the most important thing, to this is that uh, there will be a, a relationship you have with the person that you, who's supervising your PhD. Uh, please tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, like my supervisor, I'm working with Mehsa Direkshani here and she's a senior lecturer and she's the one who has been supporting me right before I landed here. Yeah, during my English English exam, like when I was about to clear my English exam, she supported me at that time with my funding. Obviously, she her support really means a lot to me. Like, like today I am here with a, with a fully funded PhD. She played a really important role in that. Okay. And, and in my research, yeah, she she she's too much involved, and she always available to me. Excellent, excellent. And um, you said funding. You alluded to funding, and. Um... Where is your funding from for your PhD? Yeah, it's from the University UKRI funded P- PhD. Sure. Yeah. UKRI is funding your PhD. Yep. But there's other ways to get uh, funding for your PhDs. Uh, uh, oh. So which other ways are they possible for a person to get funding for their PhD? If my funding comes from the Botswana government. Uh, like you said, you're come from, your, your funding is coming from the Botswana government. So it depends on, like, it depend on individual, like from which country the person belongs. Okay. Like if he belongs to India, he can apply for a Commonwealth Fellowship. And there are so many different fellowships which one can apply here that some PhDs here I come across, they are funded by the industry. So industry is funding their PhD. Some like if you have come to India, you can apply for an institute fellowship. Like I'm, I got that one and you can apply for Commonwealth fellowship. But in Commonwealth fellowship, you have some, you have to return back to your home country when you, once your PhD is over, you are supposed to serve in that com- country. But in institute fellowship, you have, you don't have any sort of bond. You can work anywhere you want. Okay. And returning back to your home country, India is uh, doing very well in terms of tech, especially for fifth generation, sixth generation networks. Uh, mm-hmm. So what made you choose Lapa University? Oh, that is such a very tough question. Yeah. But uh, when I was applying, I applied to multiple universities and I got offered from Imperial College. London. Wow. That's actually one of the best universities in the world. Like she went to University College London also, which is also in the top 10 in the world for my undergrad and my master's. But why do you omit going to a top 10 university in the world and came to Loughborough, which is still a very top university, it's actually number six in the United Kingdom? Yep. No, yeah, as you said, it's also a very good university. That's very good. Ranked six in United Kingdom and number one university in terms of sports related subjects. Yeah, like I told you, like I got, like for Imperial, they were suggesting me to get like uh, Commonwealth Fellowship, which has that bond with India. I have to return back to India once I'm done my PhD. I do, and, I, I, and, I, and, I, and at that time, I don't want to, I don't want it to get into any sort of bond. Okay. That's why I come on, come to here with, with Institute Fellowship. Here I don't have any bond. I can work wherever I want. You said bond and student fellowship. Can you explain to me what's the difference between a bond and a student fellowship so that people know when they, if they ever wanted to desire have a PhD, which source of funding to get? Yeah, 
funding like if you are being funded by your home country then they they may suppose you to return back to their to your country and solve their not in the not in anywhere else in the in the world you have some value in that to yeah you have to work for five years or six years so commonwealth is related to those fundings which has someone and you have to return back but in this institute fellowship it has nothing to do with indian government it is being funded by the university and the uk government so i don't have any sort of bond here i can work wherever i want after graduating with my phd degree yeah well i agree with that because i'm i'm a top achiever for my country the scholarship that i'm on and uh, part of the requirements it requires me to go back to my home country which i am supporting with my own startup at home which is called Aaron Dust Engineering Solutions so i'm firmly rooted with going back home to Botswana but i do understand that there is opportunities here in the united kingdom yeah that's not the condition with me I, it's up to me if i want to go to back my home i can go if i don't i don't like it's up to me wherever i want to go but that's still- why i choose this life. of our imperial and you said as well that um student fellowship so student fellowship but when a person is stuck in their home country for instance that was the only option available for me you know just to choose the best scholarship that was available student fellowships are not easily available in magazines how did you go about finding the student fellowship so people can as well if they're targeting uh, funding that doesn't have such requirements such requirements of having to go back uh, to your home country that you want to maybe as well be here in the first world and maybe continue research further without having a bond how did you go about finding this student fellowship yeah exactly when i was applying like back in january like in december 2024 when i was when i when i had conversation with some people who are doing phd in hong kong or not us or somewhere they told me that it's not easy to get a fully funded phd which had some uh you know salary and all those things in uk because the projects that we have here are generally have funding only for europe and uk students they are very rare you find some projects which have which are open to worldwide students not not particularly to uk and europe students so it was very difficult but i but by when i was applying i got this like some someone suggested me that there is an opening you should apply for that when i applied and uh, yep when i applied i got a interview letter from an interview email from my supervisor professor will and um, it it went well there after that we had a couple of more interviews and then they finalized my selection and and i and i was really fortunate that when i was applying there there we have one opening well you come to a very prestigious university you said someone made a suggestion for you how did this person who made the suggestion find this information so that the the viewers as well can as well maybe if they're looking for a student fellowship now uh, they can find them on websites is it on uh, social media uh, which places where people can specifically look at these uh, fellowships yeah when i was applying i struggled a lot to find such information ever and i would like to thank you that were covering such topic it's really going to help put post and call game my time was struggled a lot so i would suggest to all the viewers that if you are if you are interested in applying to a fully funded phd in uk which you really going to pay you significant amount here then you should have a look at all the online resources available try to like i can suggest you on the find find phd find a phd.com where you can get to know about some projects which have worldwide funding and one more thing you can always try to send email to professors approach them ask them whether they have some any sort of funding or they can support your application because in imperial college london they they have some pres- primary presidential fellowship and for that you need some professor recommendation and then for that you have to reach professor in early stage of your application and then you then then the professor will ask you to, okay just go ahead uh, excellent you <laughs> excellent excellent um i said um application so what's the application process like yeah, and you said yeah. funding this as well really and you said funding as well so what is it how much are she funding you what does this cover what does it cover yeah uh do you get some sort of salary what does cuz my scholarship what it covers it completely covers tuition it gives me stipend it gives me flights to my to my place of study yeah. and back to my home destination after completing my studies yeah, yeah, yeah. what does your phd funding cover and how did you make the application process sign Okay so yeah your 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 uh, funding is more related is it more related to commonwealth fellowship your fellowship yeah so but in institution fellowship yeah it do cover all the all your tuition fees and it provide you stipend 
the stipend is more than what you got in Commonwealth. So in Commonwealth, you got around 1,300 pound. And in this, you got around 1,700 pound. 1,700 pounds. So actually, that's a, a big difference as big well. Difference, yeah. Big difference. I believe that um, the minimum the UK government require for you to study in the United Kingdom is 1,136 pounds if you're living outside of London and 1,400 pounds if you're living inside of London. So if you get a student fellowship, if you're earning way more money, you're earning 1,700 pounds, even more than Commonwealth people, 1,300 pounds, which is more than the minimum required by the UK government. Yeah, it's it's going to be seven fifty by the by October twenty twenty five. Yeah, and you can do part time work as well in the university for twenty hours per week. So you can up thousand per month. Yeah. So you can actually work part time to support your studies and have the base salary is your seven fifty a month. But does this cover a good life in the in the United Kingdom in terms of being a student? Yeah, yeah. Uh, living costs, uh, rental. Uh, how does this day to day life look like then? Having this. Uh, Okay, for type in. yeah, for for a single person, it's sufficient enough. You will be saving a lot of money, but for married, in that term, obviously, you can easily survive here and you can save not that much, but still, you can save a good amount of money. Like a PhD student can sponsor her wife, his wife or her wife. And how did you choose this uh, t- topic that now you're studying at the moment? Uh, what yeah. influenced that? In the, it was that an application process where you set to a, a certain topic or or was it you suggested this to your supervisors? How did you find a student fellowship application process and choosing that topic that you're doing now, which is OTFS, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, it was not that straightforward. Like, you need to just, like, they, the funding was available to some ambient IoT related subject. Like, you are working on that, I know. Yes, I'm working on ambient back scatter communications. Yeah, but, but when I came here, my supervisor changed my topic a bit because, like, uh, she wanted me to work on OTFS related subject, which has more like chances of getting publication. And this is the this area is seriously is very very less explored by other researchers. So I have a lot of great ex like a uh, lot of things which I can do in this area. So she suggested me this, so I just carry on with this. Okay, and uh, how long you've been in Loughborough University now for? Uh, it's been a four months, for more than four months now. How was the settling process, culture shock? Uh, yeah, tell us about that. So when people come in maybe from other Commonwealth countries, maybe on a student fellowship, maybe from India spe- specifically, mm-hmm. what were the differences and then from your home country to now your country where you're having your studies? Yeah, UK is obviously completely different than India. People here are completely different. But the thing is, people here we have good diversity the people here are from different different backgrounds different different cultures so we get to learn a lot of, lot of things like when i was in, in uh, iit so yeah, it's also we have I, I i just try to meet i i just got the chance to get in touch with people from different part of india and here i'm getting chance to get in touch with so many different people from different different part of this world and things have been very very nice here and I did really well, and it's not well. It it was not that that difficult for me to get settled here. I agree. Like people, like you, I'm a senior here. I agree with so, that. Um, I've been in the UK for the last uh, eight years, and I have to admit, when I first came to London, there were a lot of difficulties, uh, especially coming from my uh, small country, Botswana, uh, and then coming to a populous land like a, a cosmopolitan land such as London, very diverse. Yeah, it was a bit of a struggle, but I found my way, found my route, and I was able to get first classes in my third year. But it does, there is that bit of um, just 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 this period where you are, you know, getting yourself familiar with the new culture. But uh, I wouldn't deter anyone from making the application. Going to the United Kingdom is a very very good decision. But same as not everyone can do a PhD. So what what are the traits? What what kind of character are you looking for a person? What does a person have to be doing on a regular basis to achieve these milestones that you have achieved so far to have a student fellowship? Yeah, I would suggest like when you are doing your master's or your bachelor's, you should work really well on your final year project. That really matters when you apply to any foreign university. Like uh, your final period, they try to get some publication. If you get some publication or some award, that really gonna be a really really helpful for you when you apply for such positions. I would suggest, in one word, try work work hard as much as you can. Try to get some publications. I got two during my masters. Get at least one. Focus on that. 
publications? Publications are they pub are they published to conferences? Are they published to journals? Uh, explain the, your publications to us and what were they about? Yeah, I got first. I got one conference, and then I later like advanced that work and was able to publish the submit my journal paper at that point of time. And also, I got some award being for pre doctoral researcher for that was given only to five people in the world, and I was one among them to get that one. I triple pre doctoral research grant award. Oh, uh, excellent! It really helped me. Yeah, you're a very accomplished man, same. You're very very accomplished man. You know. My like my supervisor really supported me at that point of time. That's I'm happy really with that. I'm happy with that. So yeah, AJ, like you almost see me here. I really admire you a lot. You helped me a lot during my in my early days. So why I want I I always wanted to ask you, and I today I got this opportunity. Why do you choose Loughborough University? You did your master from UCL, and then you come to Loughborough. Why? Well, I I made a very calculated decision when I came to uh, Loughborough University. I was um. Uh, I I don't only just choose my university solely based on rankings, I will, but rankings do have a a good base for you to choose a place that will give you a great education. As in, yes, UCL was at number eight in the world at the time, and I still think it is. And Loughborough University is number six in the United Kingdom. But my supervisor was a very very good um, reason why I chose this. Uh, PhD here, and that's something I would suggest to people as well. That uh, when you choose your PhD, make sure you have a very good supervisor. I thank my supervisor all the time. I wouldn't have been unable to win my first award in um, I mean, Beck's School of Communication without him. Uh, so that could be decisions that I made as well. So he went to Imperial. So essentially, when you when you choose your supervisor, look at his credentials. So he went to Imperial, which is one of the I think that's the sixth best university in the world. So essentially, I'm I'm receiving Imperial education right now. Because I have a supervisor who got his PhD from there, and、uh, he's supervised、uh, so many students.、Uh, see their publication, their track record. So that was a big、uh, influencing factor.、Um, I had to look for a place as well because when you t- we talked about、um, funding that you have, the studentship you have is not yeah you get seven fifty for、uh, your student fellowship, you get thirteen hundred for Commonwealth ones, and for myself, I get the minimum requirement in the United Kingdom, which I believe is a thousand one hundred thirty six pounds. Uh, but I used to live in London. London is very expensive. Yeah, London is very expensive. So that's another thing as well. You know, considering your student is that um, are you able to able to afford the life that you want when you move to a place? So I had to balance the fact that I wanted to work on my startup in Botswana, uh, live in a place that's relatively inexpensive, and go to a university that's a、uh, Quite re- well, yeah, quite well revered. So, and Loughborough University was a great choice for that because you're surrounded by winners when you're here, and there's a lot of athletes here. The athletes here have encouraged me, and they've、uh, showed me ways to be disciplined. I was an athlete in my third year of university. I used to go rowing, and that has built bred a great mentality for me that、um, discipline, hard work, always achieves results. Yeah, that's a great achievement, AJ. I must say, I know your supervisor, and he's really, really good. He's a director of London campus. So, yep, I must say you are doing really great work here. Well, well, same. Well, thank you for that.、Uh, appreciate your time coming on today.、Um, so, where would the people have to look for your details? So, I'll, I'll leave them in the link. Yeah,、uh, in the link. I love to answer any query if you have. You can send an email to us. You can write in comment section or whatever. Yes, I'll sign up. I'll leave my details as well. So, if you want to contact me, me either me or Sam, how to get a PhD. A fully funded PhD and what's required. Please feel、yeah. not afraid to send us、yeah. a message and say thank you for your time. Thank you so much, AJ, for inviting me. Thank、yeah. you. Thank you so much. It's a nice talking to you. Nice、thank、indeed. You so much.、Yeah. Well, that's、uh, wrap, wraps up the topic today and how to find a fully funded PhD in the United Kingdom and leverage that for opportunities. Thank you. Thank you so much.